Hey, good morning. All right. And he's just pouring it out. So uh, here's another verse. This is Galatians chapter 3, verse 26. And this is, this is a beautiful one, too. And man, he's, he's putting them in front of me, and it's just it's telling a story, a bigger story. Um, and I'm thinking I might, I might be going over them again, like I did in that one video, just taking the overall theme of each verse, because it tells a bigger story. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful one. So, okay, first I'll read it the way it is in most of our Bibles, and then take every word back to its origin. Oh, man, I don't have my glasses. Maybe I can, maybe I can get through it. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Galatians 3, 26. For ye all are the children of God by faith in Jesus Christ. For ye all. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Jesus Christ. All right, yeah, they did a good job. They got the overall meaning. But uh, let's take every word back to its origin and see, see the details. See what's going on here. Yeah, it looks like I can see it. Okay. So here we go. Galatians 3.26. For no doubt, seeing you belong to be present, to exist, to exist individually, everyone, whosoever, are born again of the angels and of Jesus Christ. So we were of the angels. We're born again of the angels because that was our place of origin. We are the Elohim. The Bible's very clear. It says it repeated, repeatedly all the way through from Genesis to Revelation. And if you can't see it, I don't know what to tell you, then you, you need to really look into it a little deeper. <laughs> and I'm not saying we're God. We're gods with a small g. Read, read the definition of H430. Understand that. Okay, so everyone, whosoever, born of the angels, born again of the angels of so we are from the angels of Jesus Christ, of those, of those who God esteems as sons, whom he loves, protects, and benefits above others, whose character God, as a loving father, shapes by chastisements, who revere God as their father, who are governed by the same spirit, and joyfully trust in God, which children do in their parents, and hereafter in the blessedness, and glory of life eternal will openly wear his dignity of the sons of God, united to him in affectionate intimacy, privy to his saving counsels, and obedient to the Father's will in all his acts of um, immediate kinship of the only and true God. Due to him, we are due to him of magistrates and judges, especially with the supreme divinity with the supreme divinity and basically right there is the definition of Elohim he's telling us who we are okay a state and in divinity okay especially with the su supreme divinity divinity belonging to God so there it is we belong to God the one and only true God now he wanted me to define divinity because maybe some people don't clearly understand what it is. And, and I didn't, you know, I, I mean, you get an idea. But so anyways, it's a state or quality of being divine, a God with a small g, or goddess with a small g, page 430. God, by knowing his word. So the divinity, it can also mean God. And it says by knowing his word, by knowing his word, which it, actually it said uh, by studying religion and theology, but I know what his spirit's telling me. It means by knowing his word, by knowing Jesus Christ, because Christ is the word incarnate. He is God incarnate. Jesus Christ is our loving father. Okay, so belonging to God in all our inflections, in all our straying from the path, so that's speaking about us. We stray from the path, but we still belong to God by being born again by his spirit. We're still screwing up as long as we're here in this world. So, so uh, in all our inflections through place and time, right, which is the marking of an act, which we came into this world by, 
by a, uh, and it says, an act by a conviction of truth. We are convicted by truth, respecting man's relationship to God and divine things with trust and holy fervor, which means intense and passionate feeling. And it can also mean intense heat, um, burning and glowing with intensity of spirit. So there it is, holy fervor, born of faith and joined with, with it by a connection to God, a conviction to God that he exists and is the creator and ruler of all things, the provider and bestower of eternal salvation through Christ, whom we obtain eternal salvation in the kingdom of God, especially by a cons constancy, reliance upon Christ, the gospel upon Christ, the gospel, who is the gospel, is the word, is the good news. And gospel means the revelation, the revealing of Christ, which is the good news that is absolutely true. Truth itself, he is truth itself induced, which means influenced to bring about and give rise, to give us rise, to uh, enhance, to enhance us. And it also can mean an electromagnetic charge to enhance an electrical magnetic charge within us, our energy, our spirit, our soul, to bring on childbirth that rebirths our spirit and soul, uh, derived by inductive reasoning of evidence to lead in, to lead in by words. It's by words. So by truth itself, by the words to believe and trust and have confidence in and rely on by an inward agreement, by an inward agreement, our, our soul in agreement with his Holy Spirit to be to befriend, obey, and yield to, to yield to him in a fixed position and place and time by a relation of rest, being at rest in Christ by fully trusting him and relying on him constantly, continually our entire lives right well as long as we're one we're born again or you know well, that's how we get born again by the inductive reasoning knowing the truth uh studying studying his word by and by the evidence that we see by he gives us through his word um we obey and yield to in a fixed position and place and time which is where we are by a Relation of rest in Christ, the anointed Son of God, the Messiah, Savior, save the Savior of all mankind, God incarnate. So there we go. Galatians 3.26. More details. Now look, the, and here's something that I've, I've just realized, and I should have known because I've known this story, and probably you do too, forever. Now understand this in our, our walk here in this world. What Satan means for evil, God means for good. Don't forget that story of Joseph, how his brothers were jealous of him and uh, um, threw him into a pit. They were going to throw him, or did they throw him into the pit? But uh, then they, they ended up selling him uh, into slavery, and he was taken into slavery into Egypt, right? And then they told his father he was dead. And uh, he went to prison. He was falsely accused of Potiphar's wife, but then he interpreted Pharaoh's dream and he was uh, put in second in command of all of Egypt. And he ended up um, being used by God to save his entire family because he prepared for the famine that was coming. And there's a famine coming. Understand that. There's a famine coming. Big one. And darkness. All this is going to occur. So, and he saved his entire, uh, uh, you know, the nation of Israel that, that was through his, his family. And they came in, but then they were taken into bondage, right, in Egypt later. But uh, he saved them all. So what Satan means for evil, God means for good. So if you're in a position where things are looking bad or, or things are occurring in your family, God is using you and calling you to separate you from the things of this world, all the distractions and influences on you here to, to use you for his purpose, right? And, uh, you know, a lot of things occurred in my life, and I couldn't even be doing this the way I'm doing this unless God put me where I am now in this place at this particular time. You know, and it just kind of dawned on me over the last couple of days, and I should know. But So there's that. Understand what Satan means for evil, God turns to good. He uses for good for all those who love him. It's a beautiful thing.
And everything's designed in this world to turn you back to your father. And it's going to continue to get, we're going to get depressed and put down and restricted and so many things are going to happen, censored, everything else. So be ready for it, be ready for it. And uh, it might behoove you if any of you live in uh, cooler climates like I do in Michigan, uh, stack, stack, stock up on blankets and cold weather gear. I'll just say that. I think, I believe, the, I think some things are going to happen really soon here. All right, be ready. All right, God bless. Have a great day. Bye.